is a little bit later than normal, it's 10 o'clock here in the UK and New York close is just coming into play. So just as the new day is about to start, we're going to run through a few charts today. I'm going to start with gold, move on to cable, pound Swiss, Kiwi card, and then we will take a look at the Dow Jones. Um, so first things first, let's just break it down from basically the weekly chart and then head down to see what we can see to look for more intricate trading opportunities. Uh, if you follow us on social media, um, we did a breakdown on gold in a reel that you'd be able to see which we were looking for shorts from uh, around 1868, 1870 and you'll, you'll see why in a moment. So first thing I want you to look at is market gave us this huge weekly rejection candle then we broke the low then we consolidated for three weeks then we rotated higher to test the previous close weekly high close uh, only to reject and break through support so when we look at this on the daily chart what you'll see is you'll see two strong impulsive moves the first impulsive move here which we can see followed by correction followed by the second impulsive move and then a correction and now we were focusing on this area as the turning point for the next third impulsive move and where that might go. So if we just break this down even further, let's just drop our Fib on from swing high down to swing low and we'll see that the market came back up into the 38% cor correction. If we drop in our just a little zone to look at, we can see previous resistance here, market pushed up created a seller's candle, broke the previous low, creating a resistance here. We can see formed a support on the same price point, we broke through and then we retested again. So we've got confluence through structure, we've got confluence through 38.2 uh, retracement. Now something we can look at as we drop down even further would be how to potentially take advantage. Well obviously those that are maybe a little bit more experienced would be looking to trade somewhere in this area. Uh, where you can see the market momentum stalling and phasing just on, on price action alone. But if you'd like to trade with a little bit more confluence and you basically look and see market break down and you know, uh, change cycle, first thing you can start looking at is potentially you've got your ascending trend line here which the market eventually after respecting here new impulse correction impulse correction impulse we saw the market break this ascending trend line here next thing we saw was a base being formed around this price point which if i just pull my cursor in was around 1842 and then today we've seen the market break through this area and it looks like we're going to close below that zone so we've got a brilliant trading opportunity tomorrow to fade any rally so basically what I'm going to be looking for will be any sort of rotation higher uh, in and around uh, 1843 uh, with them price rejecting this area to get short. So all we've done is we've just looked at the higher time frame where the market is moving from and to which we would expect potentially price maybe to come back down test the 1800 barrier the 1795. It could come lower um, but look let's just work with what we can see and you know if we just basically look at call it 1843 we put in our short positioning somewhere around here we can put our stop loss above the swing high uh, and then we'll just look for the market to come down to just around eight well, let's call it 1800 just above there so it's a nice two to one if you're just going to go for a sell limit and then put your stops above the swing highs we can improve on that by waiting for the market to come into this area so what, we're gonna, what I'm going to do is uh, 1843 so it would actually be a little bit better that would be so it'd be 2.6 if you would just do blind entries so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put an alert in at that price point and then I'll look for price action tomorrow to see if I can reduce the stop loss if I can reduce the stop loss I'm not going to extend the target if I can reduce the stop loss you can see how the gains can significantly change from two and a half percent to seven percent or whatever that may be but you know, hindsight is the one thing and this is just theory right now because the market hasn't even rotated higher. But this is going to be our add-in trade to look to get short from around 1843. 
So GBP USD, uh, this market has performed very, very well for us in recent weeks. Uh, we did send out a couple of videos that were highlighting to get long from 122. The market's done exactly what we wanted. It's pushed higher. Uh, commercial activity, commercials are still buying this market. They're still adding to their long positions, um, which obviously um, is good for further upside. Um, however, um, I would be looking for retracement now to look for the next first higher low essentially to get long. So if we drop back down our time frames, uh, one thing we can see as a confirmation is price broke the descending trend line. Uh, we have seen the market run up into this previous structure highs and we're seeing price stall around 126.40. Um, I'd like to see price potentially run down as low as 124. Um, if we just pull this in, I'm not going to look at any pivots today. All I'm just going to do is just have a look at structure areas and see if we can find anything that correlates quite nice. Uh, so that 50% retracement area would be the one that I'd be looking at pretty much around 124 even handle. Uh, so again, I'm going to set an alert here. This would be something that I'd be looking to uh, get long should price come back down into 124s. On the flip side, if we break 126.50 air, if we create new highs, I will be looking for um, trades long in this market, but after a correction, I need to see it break higher. I want to see the dollar index pushing lower, and then I'll be looking for opportunities to get long on an intraday basis. Moving over to pound Swiss, this is a chart based, uh, just looking at the weekly and daily, you can see 121 has been an area that has been of a significant interest that the market has we've got long tailed wicks down here uh, you can see 121.50 uh, on the weekly chart is an area that hadn't been broken and closed below until last week so the question remains is is this uh, a false break and close below so if we go to the daily let's take a look so realistically we want to be putting the support level or resistance level a slight bit higher and we are sat right on it right now so I'm not going to do anything until we see the market sort of clear 121.50 um, and a close below 120. My bias lays with continuing to look for long opportunities um, for GBP. Um, the only sort of downside for GBP Swiss is the SNB did talk about uh, intervening and potentially looking to strengthen their currency. Um, due to the significant sell-off over recent weeks. So that's something that we've got to think about is, you know, look, if we trade the technicals, all that can happen is we can only lose whatever we risk on that market, on that particular trade. So that is the only thing you can control, how much money you're actually going to risk on a trade. You can't control the outcome. You can't control uh, how far the market's going to go. But you can control how much money you put on a particular trade the lot sizing that's that's in your hands so if you risk too much I'm sorry guys that is down to you um, the best way to start trading is risk the least you possibly can so if you're trading micro lots that's 0.01 find yourself a profitable strategy find yourself profitable and consistent not one lucky trade and 10 losses I'm talking consistency when you find consistency then you can start to address your risk management Looking at Kiwi CAD now, so this is a little bit of a bide, bide your time, but because I'm bullish pound, I'm very interested in this because of the price point. So get your alert set above 121.50, and then we can be looking at potential movements up towards 124. Um, because it won't hold around, if it does start to get some momentum, it really will crack on towards 124. New Zealand CAD, this is um, a, I don't know why I've got so many like everything seems to have been duplicated bear with me so if we just go to the weekly chart um, we've got this sort of broadening pattern that you can see in play right now now we have three rejections third rejection we've seen bullish candle weekly close second candle bullish weekly close and then third candle, obviously we're still in the middle of the week, so this could finish bullish or it could be extremely bearish. We, we don't know. But ultimately what we're looking for is some kind of correction to get long. So if we go to the daily chart, we can see that this market now has um, effectively
had a seller candle today, but we need a little bit more confirmation before we can start to look to trade this long. So looking at the four hour, something that is standing out here is that we've had a change in cycle. So if I just highlight the market impulse correction, impulse correction, impulse, failed to break the high, put in a new low. So we've broken the low. So it looks like we could have maybe a little bit more downside here. So I, I would just be a little bit more hesitant uh, before looking to get long on this market just yet. Even though I want to be a buyer of Kiwi, um, let's drop down to the hourly, see if anything is changing. Now, so the, we're still seeing the same pattern, which is um, a bearish trend on the hourly. So we need to see that rotate. We need to see the hourly change from lower lows and lower highs to failing to break the low to a higher low and then we can start to look to trade it to the upside so again something to watch out for where do we want to look at potentially taking this trade long so where do i see some nice structure somewhere through 8170 looks quite nice and maybe even one more leg down maybe one more leg down into 82 even handle so 82 even handle looks quite nice actually. Um, let's just pull in our fib, see if we can correlate 82 with a particular retracement. So 82 comes in at oh, 82.10 comes in at uh, the 50% retracement and 81.80. So if I was to have any sort of preference, I wouldn't be trading from where, where we are right now. I'd need to see either if I'm going to trade from here, I need to see the market fail and then create a new high. Or I'd want to see it come down, test that 8180 and then do the same. So you, you're effectively watching for the hourly to create either a double bottom or a higher low than a higher high. And then we look for that next higher low to trade it long. So it'll do something like this. And then we're good to go. And then last but not least, we'll look at a risk market. So we're going to look at the Dow Jones. So this is quite an easy, simple chart and should be straightforward for everyone to, to look at and try and identify. The first thing we can see is that this market is predominantly heading bearish. So if we just connect up all the tips of the wicks, this market is bearish. Okay, and you know we're looking at this and we've got impulse, correction, impulse, correction. Failed, failed impulsive move, then we move higher, then we start to rotate lower and then we've rotated higher so are we going to come back into this area here to have let's say a, a bear rally before we then rotate lower and head back lower again towards the back end of summer so this is what i'm going to be looking for i'm going to be looking for the market to potentially pull back into and around uh, 32600 we weren't too far away from it today while we remain above this area um, yeah, I'm going to be looking for short term rallies uh, up to sort of 34,000, uh, which you can see is a strong structural level when you look left through these uh, lows here, significant lows, uh, swing high here, multiple swing highs there. So there's there's potential there to, to look for opportunities. So I've driven right down to the 15 minute time frame here. And if we know we're going to run up towards, say, 34,000. Then we want to look and say, right, where can we look for trading opportunities based on cyclical change? And we had this move down, then we've had a strong move up, and then we've sort of sold off. So I quite like this area here, which is around 33,200. I want to see the market get above there tomorrow. Then I'll look for a trading opportunity long towards that 34,000. So that's going to be a nice little simple play. Um, if the market continues to rotate lower, then I'm not interested. Um, until we touch the, the zone that I referred to, which is 32,600. Okay, guys, well, that's it from me, Mark, tonight. If you did enjoy the content that we've uh, put out tonight, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe. When you subscribe, it's going to come straight to your inbox and hopefully uh, we can map out a few charts for you that you can uh, successfully take some pips on.